Recently, I've been talking a lot about using Dart to build command line apps. And I've actually done a bunch of work recently in my own tools to build a set of functionality that make it more interesting to build command line apps, some features, some libraries, um, even some surprising stuff that I didn't think would be very easy. And it turns out, after a little bit of work, you can uh, share and generalize a lot of very powerful tools that exist in the shell. So I'm going to do two videos. The first one is going to be a very general, basic introduction to building art, Dart applications um, that are designed to work in the shell and how to think about using Dart in a shell. Um, and the second one, I'm going to get into a little bit more complicated stuff with some of the features I've added to the bag of tricks. So just for some context, today I am on a Mac um, running OS X 10.8.2, I believe, and I'm using Bash as my shell interpreter. I'm pretty sure most of what I share today will work for folks that are using ZSH, which from my experience is the other popular shell on a Unix system. My understanding is most of the stuff I share today should work fine if you're on Linux. Um, I'm pretty sure most of what I talk about today won't be much help to folks uh, in Windows um, using the Windows command shell. Um, I think some of the stuff, it'd be interesting if folks that are using PowerShell dug in, because I think there's some interesting stuff you could do that's similar to what I showed today. So let's kick it off and create a very small, very simple Bash app for, for Dart, in Dart. So let's go to my temp directory and let's make a directory called demo. And let's create a new file. I'm going to call it what's up dart. And we'll open up our Sublime editor. And hopefully maximize it. There we go. And let's write the shortest possible Dart app. As, as you can see, I'm trying to do a play off Hello World with What's Up World. So there's a super tiny app, and if we go into the shell, now there's a couple important things to start now. One is, if I want to run this through the Dart interpreter in the shell, um, I could go find where Dart lives on my system and execute that directly. Um, I use a custom script based on Homebrew to install Dart, and I can talk about that later if folks are interested. Um, but it gets installed into user, bin, seller, excuse me, user local seller, um, Dart editor, the current build version. I'm on uh, one of the most recent trunk builds of Dart. You go to Dart SDK, bin, there's Dart. And I can type, and now that I'm there, I can do run that script I just created. So my WhatsApp script. And I get the nice printout. Now obviously that is really painful if you're in the shell. What you want to be able to do is run Dart directly without finding the path it's installed in. And the way you do that is you make sure that the path containing Dart is in your path environment variable. And so some of these things I'll hint at and you might want to go research and read about to understand it fully. Um, the hint I'll give now is if you type export in your shell, you should see a list of your environment variables set. And you'll notice I have a big set of things in my path. And it turns out, because I'm using Homebrew, Dart actually exists in this user local bin directory. It gets redirected there. Um, and a good way to test if an app is in your path and where it is, is the which command. So if I type which Dart, oops, you'll see that it is, in fact, in user local bin slash Dart. And so that means I could actually, let's actually go into the directory, my demo directory, and type Dart and what's up. And you'll see that runs great. So that's a really short way to get things running. What would be really nice, though, is if I could just execute that script directly without even calling Dart. Right now, there's a bunch of commands that exist in your shell, like CD. Um, you might use things like Git or Homebrew that just work. And some of these are native binaries. Some of these actually are scripts. Brew, for instance, is a Ruby script but you can run them directly without calling Ruby brew, for instance. So how does that work? Well, you need, you need to do two things. The first is you need to mark that file as executable. So if I go into what's up and I do a chmod plus x, I'm changing the modifiers, the security modifiers. I'm going to say plus x means plus executable. So mark what's up dot dart as executable. And actually before that, I'm going to do an ls-a in this directory, ls- dash, what do I have, ua, la. There we go. And you'll see, here's what's up and the modifiers on it. 
So if I do a ch mod plus x to what's up, and I do my ls again, you'll see now I have execute bits set on that file. So now I actually can access the file directly, type dot slash what's up, and try to run it. And you'll see I get the bash yelling at me. The bash, bash is yelling at me because it doesn't know how to run this file. It probably tries to run it just directly as an executable, and obviously it's very sad trying to run this as an executable. It turns out there's actually things you can do to the contents of the file so that it works. Um, it works directly in the shell. So let's go back to our editor. as I move it around here. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is kind of make this look a little bit prettier. And now what we're going to add is the hash bang syntax. What this says, basically if you have a text file and um, in bash shell, and I believe ZSH, if the first line is hash bang, this is basically the executable de declaration. It's telling bash if this is run, how should I run it? What interpreter should I use? And what I want to use is I want to use Dart. So I could, should, maybe I can just type in Dart here and have that work. Um, so we'll save it and I'll add Dart as my interpreter and we'll go back to the shell and I'll type in here, what's up? And it says it doesn't know about that interpreter. So what we need to do is teach this script how to find Dart when it gets launched. And they're actually, after looking around, I found a way that I think works pretty well across different shell environments, and that's using the env command. So if I just type env here for environment, you see that it prints out my local environment, all the, um, all the shell variables that exist. And so if I run my script, first by passing it to that environment, so we can go see which env, and it's in the very generic user bin directory. So I do user bin env, and then pass in Dart, and now run the app, I get what's up. So now we have an executable app. One thing you'll notice though is that I have to explicitly put the dot slash there. I can't just run what's up. In fact, if I'm trying to do tab completion, it doesn't work at all. This is the shell babysitting us and basically not allowing us to run an executable directly unless we're implicit about it. So a way that we can actually teach the shell about this app and let us run it anywhere. So for instance, if we're in the temp directory, I can't type what's up, I have to go into the demo directory and type and run the command. What you want to do is teach the shell about all the paths where you have executables and where, where, it's, it should, where it should search for those executables. So you get tab completion on those and you can run them directly without typing in a full path or a relative path. And the way you do that is you add the path where your executables are to your path. Yes, yeah, so you add the path to the path. So if you type export here, or actually even better, echo, you'll see I have a path defined in my shell that points to a bunch of locations where binaries exist. Some of them are standard, some of them, you know, point to where binaries for node exist, some of them point to places where um, homebrew puts executables, I have my own bin directory. Well now I have this demo directory, so let's add that demo directory to the path variable. And the way you do this is you do an export path equals, we want to keep the existing path we have, so we'll type in the, var the variable name for that, just dollar sign path, references a shell variable, colon, and then we'll do tilde slash temp slash demo. And now if we do echo path, you'll notice that the last entry is now that demo directory. So if I type what's up now, you'll see I get a nice completion on it, and it works. Something else that's interesting and that I think a lot of developers don't realize is you can get, people are running these scripts, I think Homebrew would be a good example, that aren't actually binary applications, it's a Ruby script. Um, and so what you do is you do this hash bang syntax to define, to tell the shell how to run it as an executable. And the other thing you do is you remove the extension. So let's actually go into our demo directory and move whatsapp.dart to whatsapp. So it still looks like an executable, and if we go up here, we can do what's up, and it works. Now, obviously, if you open this in Sublime or the Dart editor, you won't get your nice statement completion. So you can kind of decide, do I want, you know, those set of features? But now from a user perspective, as long as they have Dart 
on their system in their path, this app will just work, which works really nice. So that's the first part of kind of getting an app running in Dart, and we'll cut to another set of stuff next.